How's it going, everybody? We got Coach Fran on the call here. He's going to start with a uh, brief opening statement. After that, we will take questions. Just raise your hand, and we'll take your questions for about 15 minutes. Coach? Uh, it's an exciting day for the program, man. We just got a chance to uh, wrap up uh, our 24 class. I'm just extremely excited, thankful, all our coaches, man, all the support staff, Coach Robinson, uh, Coach Nick, Coach Nuns. I mean, you guys just did an amazing job. And anyone else that I may forget, I'm not trying to forget you, but just each and every coach, man, you guys put all the effort in and done everything, and it won't go unnoticed. I just really appreciate you guys. And we'll take questions out by raising your hand. Please uh, mute when you are not on for the question. Tommy, start us off. Hey, Fran, appreciate you making the time, man. Oh, my man, Tommy, what's up, man? And um, I know it's probably been crazy for you to pull off what you pulled off. How'd you do it? Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? What's up, Tommy? We've known each other for some time. How you doing? Doing well, man. How are you? Appreciate it. I can't complain, man. Um, Dart. That's really how. And uh, a staff, a great staff that believed in it probably more than me, you know, and just continued to push. And, uh, you know, we're getting not exactly where we want to be because we're super competitive, but we, I think all the guys with detail, they held each other accountable, including myself, relentless and, and just toughness, you know what I mean? And we just done that. And that's really how we got it done because everybody believes in the culture. The kids bought into the culture and, you know, we are able to do some things and um, we still got a little more to come though. I'm not done yet. Chris? Uh, Fran, I, I wondered if you'd talk a little bit about um, recruiting a quarterback out of the transfer portal. And, and did you need to get the agreement that the wide receivers would come here to make it an appealing place for Kyle? Did you need him in place to get the wide receivers to come? How did you work all that out? I was just talking to him. You know, I just wanted to get Kyle to come. Um, Kyle wanted to get back home. Uh, this was a place on Kyle's mind just – as soon as he hit the portal, as soon as he hit it, and it was announced that he was there, uh, we reached out, Kyle reached back out, and then went back and forth. And we just commun continuously communicated and just talked to each other. And I've known Kyle since he played Little League football. So this isn't just like a, a fresh thing where it's like, oh, snap, let's see if this could be a place. We've known each other. Uh, just he's played with our offensive coordinator's son. Um, coach Nunes is known to be a good quarterback coach. But uh, I've known Kyle's father, Kyle's father and my wife, worked in the same uh, hospital, you know, when she was finishing up her clinicals, she kind of got a chance to know them. So this wasn't just a uh, thing that was like, oh, we should try it and go and do it. It was like, okay, Kyle wanted to come back home and he wanted to come where he would be truly, truly appreciated and understood um, how good of a quarterback he is and some things. And we felt as though he's the guy that we can get to help really lead this program to where we need to take it off to so it can be a, a program and not just a team. And um, I don't think there would have been a better quarterback out there in the country right now that would have been able to come and do this for us. Thank you. Mario? Hi, Coach. Uh, everyone sees the pictures of the Ferraris, the hibachi dinners in the Dome. Uh, was there a big emphasis when you took the job with John Wildhack uh, about, you know, making a splash right away with things like this. How how did that go about and happen? Well, that was just uh, right ideals from uh, Coach Devin Red and um, another guy, Khalil, who runs our recruiting department. Those guys are just magnificent, and we wouldn't have been able to do anything without them. And uh, those guys had all those ideals. Um, Mine is just honesty and dark. You know, I'm just a straightforward. I don't, I don't have time for all that other stuff like that. That was their ideals, and they know what the kids like. They know what my son likes. So, you know, whatever it was that we need to do, just and that's just a night of excitement. But that wasn't what, like, made everybody want to come here. They want to come here because we got really good physician coaches. They want to come here because we have a great athletic director. Our chancellor's behind the program a lot. They see all the things that are being done. So that was just a little piece of it, but it had no – like there wasn't like why they wanted to come. They wanted to come because they got a chance to listen to the heads of our academic departments and they hear their plan and they hear my vision of what it takes to go and be successful. So, you know, with all the bells and the whistle, that's cool and that's what you guys see. But when they come here, they understand and know like, oh snap, that's success. And when you can have that vision and you can see what success is already before you get to it, kids want it and they're, and they're up to the challenge of 
being coached hard, being held accountable for everything that you go and that you do. So I think that's why they come. And every kid that's committed here, they know that this is going to be a challenge for them. It's going to be the hardest thing that they've ever went through in their entire life. But at the end of the day, they're going to make out and be where they want to be. Thank you, Coach. Yeah. Josh? Coach, uh, Coach Brown, I just want to know with some of the weaknesses that you identified, you know, from last year's roster, was there a, a certain position group that you prioritized, whether on the high school, uh, on the high school slate or on the, on the in the portal? Uh, I'm a, I wouldn't necessarily say that. I would say that uh, it was important that we got a really good strength coach. It was important that our strength coach came and I got a guy that I think is very detailed. He's tough. He's smart. He understands what to do. Him and um, both of our strength coaches, you know, those two guys are amazing. And I think they got some assistants that understand what it takes to go be successful, what it takes to win in the fourth quarter. That was really important to me. And I mean, just like earlier, you know, we want to win. And it was important to go get the quarterback, you know, I mean, it was important to get a pass rusher. And I think we've done those things because on any football team, you want to make sure you got good offensive linemen to tackle. You want to make sure you got a receiver, which we went got. You want to make sure you have a pass rusher. You know, and then we got a quarterback. So we got all those pieces. We got the pieces that it takes to have a good football team. Got some corners. You know, you got everything. I thought we, I think we went and touched a little of everything that was needed to touch. But the main thing to me was the uh, strength and conditioning coach. Getting Coach Chad Smith here was a uh, big coming up. Jordan Barber, we were really excited about getting those two guys. Thank you, Coach. Oh. Jesse? Hey, Coach. Uh, thanks again for the time. Appreciate it. Um, you got a lot of talented guys uh, coming in here uh, next year. Just what is the most exciting part about this recruiting class, you know, the first one that you bring here to Syracuse? Practice. Just can't wait for practice. I can't wait to get out there and practice. I can't wait to be in the weight room just competing. Like, I want to compete. I want. I can't wait to, for them to get here and understand the level of competitiveness that it's going to be. And that's day in and day out. We compete in the class. We're going to compete on the football field. And there's no, like, time for waiting. That's the one piece that I'm excited about. Like, I can't wait for practice. Everybody else looking for that. I don't care about the season. Season going to handle itself when it comes. I can't wait to January 16th. That's our first lift. On January 15th at 5 p.m., we got a meeting. And that meeting is going to set the tone for that first lift tomorrow. And we are going to compete. Like, uh, I'm one of those type of guys. I want them to enjoy this break. But I can't wait to practice. You know, that's what I'm looking for, practice and waiting. Thanks, Coach. Dan? Coach, you're all about relationships and building those connections. Uh, there's people that are relationship-driven. And there's people that are transactional. Just what you can say about those relationships that you have built to get these student athletes to flip from where they were committed to, to leave the schools that they were at, just those relationships that go beyond simply trying to tell somebody what they want to hear. Well, it's just honesty. You know, I think my name speaks for itself when it comes to where we're at, this part of the, you know, atmosphere being up here on the East coast, um, just being up here in the Northeast, this is, um, it's my backyard, so they all know who I am. They know where I come from. They watch some of their parents watch me from being a little high school kid to growing up to the man that I am right now as a father and as a husband. And when you see all those things and you see who I am in my faith, you see how I am as a husband, as a father, you know, and then as a football coach when it comes down to how I'm involved with my players, how I stay on top of my players and where we're just in it together. And I'm not just a coach that I'm looking for everything for me I'm kind of trying to make sure that I get them done because if I get the kid to accomplish that degree I get the kid to accomplish being a draft pick I get the kid to accomplish being a good man in the community then it's a great chance that what I want later on in life is going to come Wyatt thanks for your time coach uh I was wondering I know that you've promoted both uh, Athletes Who Care and Orange United. I was wondering if you could talk about the conversations that you've had with those groups and your just you know your general approach to NIL. I don't even really have conversations with them. You know, I like we got other people that's involved in that and do it. I don't really have conversations with those guys. Um, I just really focus on the football aspect of it, of getting guys to come in. Of course, every university has it now. If you don't have it, then it's going to be hard. But I don't really conversate with those guys like that. I kind of try to stay away from that. You know, my, my thing is to lock in on 
the football, locking on the coaches and the full-time staff and the player himself of being developed on the football field and in the classroom. So I kind of stay away from that. We have someone that does that. That's not my um, my, that's not my area. Griffin? Hey, Coach. Uh, you brought a lot of talented guys into the program today, but one that really sticks out to me is King Joseph and how you were able to flip his commitment. How did that all transpire for him to now be a part of your program? Well, we started when I first got down to Georgia. Um, I went to a camp. I took my son to a camp, and he was at the same camp, and I watched him there, and I was just seeing him move. And then when I went to Georgia, I said, it was this kid that was out there at this camp. He had on, like, number 35 as an under the kid. I said, it was pretty good, y'all. They watched him, and we liked him there. And uh, he was coming up and kind of went through. And, you know, he's a big recruit. Everybody trying to recruit him. There's a bunch of stuff going on. So um, I kept a good relationship with him. And I talked to him about life. And I just, our relationship, it just overtook everything else. Like nothing else really mattered with the, the relationship I had with him, the relationship I grew with his mom, uh, the relationship that his mom and my wife had with each other, just, you know, because they're both in the nursing field. So when they would come up to Georgia and talk, it was good. So then when it came time to, for me to come and get my own program, um, it was just like, yo, what's up? You know what I mean? You know what it is. Like, let's, let's go have some fun. Uh, you're going to have a guy here that you can learn from, be with, you know, and Fidel Diggs, and you get to do all this stuff right with it. And this would be good if you guys could do this together. I think it would be a big deal because you get to learn from a tough guy that plays football the right way, and you get to go do that right out of high school. So all that was intriguing to him, and his mom wants him to get a degree, and she knows that I'm going to be on top of him. And I know that if I'm not on him, and she's going to come and cussing me out. So I got to make sure that he academically stay right because that's all she cares about, all she talks about is he better get his degree. He has to get his degree. So that's where we are. Thank you, Coach. Uh, Coach, obviously you brought in a lot of your own recruits, but you also managed to maintain some of those that were committed here before you took over. Uh, Jamie Tremble, Jakari Williams, two of the big ones. What were those conversations like knowing that they maybe were initially promised a different vision than the one you currently have for the program? And what was the conversation like keeping them on board? I just think that I, um, my vision was clear. They could see it. They understood what it was. I think Ja'Cory will have opportunity to be the future of this program. You know, I sat there and I talked with him. Um, Jamie's a freak show. You know, I watched Jamie when I was down in Georgia. You know, I mean, we were interested in Jamie there. So, I mean, he's just a freak athlete. He he can do a lot. You know, he's going to be a tight end, but he's going to also go out wide. You know, he's going to do a lot with him. So, you got to be able to use his athletic ability. Just, I mean, you don't find a lot of guys like that. And, I mean, look at his pedigree, right? You talk about his dad, his brother, his mom's athlete. I mean, the whole family's athletic, yeah, you know. So, I mean... He's just a freak show. So, you know, we were able to continue to show them a vision. The vision was clear. They understood what our tight ends coach, Coach Mike Johnson, who's been – he was our co-offensive coordinator, but he's been an offensive coordinator for the 49ers. He's been an offensive coordinator for the Atlanta Falcons. And them being able to understand and know he's going to be able to develop you, you know, and then you get a chance to come and learn under Aronde, who's a really good football player also. So there's a lot that we have to offer. And um, he – He's a very, very intelligent kid. So he dotted all his I's, crossed all the T's, went through everything the right way. Moms drilled me and asked me a lot of questions. And, you know, all the questions just continue to come up the right way. She's a very intelligent woman. So she can ask you the same question in seven different ways. You better have the same answer. So it was it was pretty cool with them. I enjoyed uh, just getting to learn and know them. And we're still getting to learn and know each other. You know, we still got time, more time. So, but I'm excited about them. Thank you. Emily? Hey, Fran, you mentioned earlier there's obviously still work to do in this class. I'm just curious kind of if there's anything in particular you're going to be looking for in the next kind of month and a half before the, the February signing day or if that will kind of depend on transfer portal activity um, and, and who else maybe leaves the current roster. All I'm going to say, Emily, is I'm going to look for good football players. Good football players, they're out there. We're going to tell them what our vision is and what we're going to do here. We're going to explain DART to them and see if they like it. But I wouldn't give you too much more. If I give you my secrets, then it wouldn't be secrets, right? So, but we're going to get good football players. I can promise you that, all right? 
Thank you. Back to Josh. I was kind of like what Emily is saying. There's there's a lot of player movement, um, either on your side, but also with guys, you know, potentially sitting out the ball or potentially ending their college career. Which um, which recruit player did you emphasize or did you um, kind of prioritize replacing guys that may leave the program? No, I just came. I just looked at the roster and seeing what we needed, and then, you know, what was in depth, and then what were game changers. Look for what's needed, and then game changers. So that's all I really did. What was needed. Okay, who could be a game changer for us? Who can help us and get change the game? And then we go from there. You know, so that's all we really did was just looked at the roster. We know what we need. Okay, now who's a game changer? Because game changers you gotta get those guys when they come because they don't often come a lot, you know. And we wanted to get those guys and then we wanted program builders, mm -hmm. guys that we believe can play football really well, but are extremely tough and will help you build a program like Jackson Meeks. That'll be coming here as a tough guy. You know, can catch his butt off. Von Rouse do all that well, block, but he's going to show guys in that receiver room. And I'm saying they don't know how because a lot of guys take everything personal. But I think he's a tough guy, and he's going to show guys how to practice. This is what practice looks like. That makes sense. So, that's it. Thank you, Coach. No, no problem. Bro. We're going to take a couple more for Coach. Uh, yeah, we'll start with Chris. Brian, one of the most difficult things whenever there's a coaching change is there are some people that committed to the previous coach that don't stay committed or decommit. Uh, what was your what were your conversations like with kind of the six or seven kids that chose to decommit? Uh, it was a mutual agreement most of the time. You know what I mean? Sometimes on my part, sometimes there. I'd rather not say whose part it was. But at the end of the day, it becomes a mutual agreement because you have to do what's best for them. And then I have to do what's best for Syracuse University. So, I mean, it's never a good thing for someone to not leave. My thing is I just want to make sure that they have a place to go. When I know they'll have a place to go, then, okay, y'all be cool. Yeah, we'll get them somewhere. Coaches say they'll get them somewhere. Great. You say you'll get them somewhere. I'm straight. Let's, get, let's make our moves now. And then vice versa, you know. We want to make sure we got some guys to get, but we don't worry about – they shouldn't worry if we can get a guy. I'll tell them. Hey, that's, we're big boys. We'll handle our business. You know, so I'll just try to say all those with mutual agreements. And better yet, you could say that they just wanted to leave and not want to be here for it to be, you know, the right thing to say out of respect for everyone that didn't end up staying. You know, those guys went on to do what they felt was better for their career and for their and to further along their education. Thank you. Yeah. Tommy? Brian, I've heard from, you know, and seen on social media, some lifelong Syracuse fans saying this is the most excited and invested they felt in this program since, you know, more than 20 years since the McNabb years. What's it like knowing that you've created that buzz and that this fan base largely matches the excitement you're feeling? First off, I didn't do it. My, the, our staff and myself and these players that are already here on the team, they kind of created and I just came in and jumped on and seen something and seen a way that we can go, had a different vision. And we all like decided, myself, Coach Robinson, we all just got together like, yo, this is the move. This is how we got to it. Let's go get it. Let's do it this way. Let's impact. Let's move off of this. I got some creative thoughts. The other guys had creative thoughts. And, you know, we got a great creative team. Like they do a good job of putting a picture out there so you guys can all feel like you're right there with us and taking every step of the way. So. I mean, I, I don't think you could ever just say this was me. I happened to sit in the seat, but there's so many people behind the scenes that are just intelligent. Like I tell them all, I'm happy you guys are all here because you guys have the IQs. I have really, really high IQs. I'm just a good decision maker. So I can use your IQs and make good decisions. And then we put this thing all together and I think we're going to have something special. Jesse? Coach, I know today is obviously an exciting day. Uh, tomorrow, probably just as exciting with the bowl game. Uh, just what are you looking forward to the most, seeing, um, you know, kind of how this roster that as is um, fares tomorrow night? Honestly, what I'm excited for, I want them to go play and win. Like, I, I can't wait to see Coach Nunes get another one. I mean, like, that's big to me because, like, that's my guy. Like, me and Coach Nunes are really, really close. Uh, we got a chance to work at another institution together. Um, I mean, we look at it like he's an Italian guy from up North Jersey. I'm from South Jersey. We got together and like, that's my man, you know? So like me and him have a really, really good relationship. 
our wives are good friends, our children are. Like I respect that last name, you know, just the Campanellis itself for football in New Jersey. So I want to see that. But I can't wait until 11.30 p.m. at night when I have a chance to sit in front of that team. And it's finally I'm the head football coach of that team completely. And I got some mid-year guys that got the chance to come in and they're working out early and doing all that. And then I'm gonna have the other guys on the Zoom and it's time to go to work. Like, like even just talking to you about it right now, like I just can't wait for that. Like I'm excited. I've been waiting my entire life for that opportunity in that moment. And I'm going to seize it. I'm going to seize it. I'm going to be excited about it. And then we're going to go to work. I'm telling you guys go home, relax. But January 15th, it's on. You know, and I'm ready to work, but I can't wait till 11.36 that night, guys. Like, that's all I'm thinking about. But I want them to win. I want them to see that for Coach Nuns and for the players. Like, they deserve it. They down here. I mean, they're handling themselves like men, doing everything they're supposed to. I'm watching them go in and out. I didn't change the rules. No hats in the building. So I see when I see them, they kind of see me coming. They're taking their hats off, taking their uh, bandanas off and things of that nature. So I just respect the way they're working, you know, and I know it's different. Because I'm not actually coaching, but I'm walking up and down the sidelines and watching little things. Hey, Lockheed, you're supposed to be watching this. Hey, you're supposed to do that. Just all the things that I've learned over the few over the years of coaching, I get a chance to sit back and watch it. And man, like I said to you again, though, like 11.30 plus, if you can have a camera there, you should be there and have a camera because I'm excited about it, bro. I get a chance to do something that uh, only 30 other people got a chance to do at this school. I'm the 31st, so I got to do it the right way. Dan? Coach, you talk about when that moment happens, this will officially all be your team. But this was your first National Signing Day where you're the head coach. You got to put your staff together in these last few weeks, got to put this class together as well. Just what all of this has been like for you, because there's only going to be one time that you get to experience this for the first time. So how have these last few weeks been through your eyes? It's been fun. I'm competitive, so I'm trying to compete and see where we at in different rankings and things of that nature. I mean, you don't care. I just want to get the best players, but like, I want to compete. Yeah, I want to be. I want to be number one in everything we do. Like I do not like the one thing I learned from Coach Smart. He said, "We will not be hunted. We will do the hunt." So like I want to make sure that's understood. Like I didn't go down there and hang with Coach Smart and Bush Champ and those guys for two years. To come back and just make it okay. Now nah, I got one goal, one thing. Well, two things. My, I have two goals for our players. I want to make sure they all get educated and get a degree. And I want to win a national championship. When I get to do those two things, then you'll see, okay, he's happy now. Like, he's extremely excited. I'm going to enjoy it along the way because I got a wife and kids and they need to enjoy it. But I'm here to help these kids get educated and win a national championship. And if we can do those two things, all the other stuff that comes between I know to work this stuff out. All the individual goals, all the coaches I have, they get to come and go, go be head coaches, players get drafted, all that stuff. Like, that's exciting, and we're going to celebrate those things when it happens. But my goals, educated, national championship. So all this along the way is just what I pray for, and God is putting it in my place. So there's never nothing that's too much. I bet you drink it out of water holes. I hear all these sayings like, no, nah, just whatever you give to me. Like, I'm happy that it's me because it could be someone else. I'm happy that the AD chose me to be the head coach. I'm happy the chancellor took the time to sit down with me and is happy about that. I'm happy that all the alumni are saying that they're coming back and want to be involved more and want to get around. And they're doing that because of myself, because that means the man above chose me to go do it. And I know if he chose me to do it, that I can do it as long as I keep him first. And it'll all work itself out. And then last person had their hand raised when we called for a few more is Griffin. So if you could finish this off, Griffin. We'll just finish with y'all three. All right. One, two, three, and then we'll be Perfect. Back. So that way we can show. Yeah, Coach. Uh, Non-football related question for you. How has your family transitioned to this new chapter in your guys' life? My sons love it. My wife cussed me out like normal, so everything's straight. It's the same thing. You know what I mean? You know, but I, I, uh, I enjoy it, though. I'm uh, I mean, they've been, they've been fun. My grandmother lives with us. My grandmother's 86 years old, so she stays with us. We got three dogs. I got a Yorkie, a Porter Collie, and a little Frenchie. So just getting to go home, like I haven't been able to go home. I was home with my daughter. She's been telling me every day, hi, Dada, I love you, Dada. Come see me, Dada. So, like, just hearing her say that, like, warms me up. But, I mean, it's been fun, but I do miss them. 
but then I also know like it's a reason that I'm doing it, which is why I go so hard at this because I'm not giving that time to them that some normal families get. You know, our family is a little different because I am a coach and I understand that. So I try to make sure I can give them the time that's needed. And um, my wife definitely tells me when I'm not and when I'm not focused. So, I mean, I hear it a little bit. I heard it once and I said, okay, let me lock in. I'm sorry. I love you. You're not sending that text. I love you so much. I'm so thankful for you just to kiss up so that way she don't be too mad at me when she sees me. That's a good question, man. Thank you for asking me that, Joe. No doubt. Thanks, Griffin. Last two, Chris, then Josh. Rand, obviously, like with any coaching change, there have been a, a number of young men that have gone into the transfer portal. Have you talked to everybody? And do you think like we're sort of through that wave or do you think there's another wave, uh, you know, to come as you have these conversations? You never know. You never know how kids feel, what, what they get, or it just might be a certain conversation that they think you had with somebody else and you didn't have that with me or you never know. I mean, I'll be prepared for it. You know, I won't be the, the transfer portal will benefit us from here on out. Like I'm not worrying about that. Like, like I told the guys when we first got here, listen, I will not be held hostage. I'm here because I can recruit. So therefore, I'm not worrying about the transfer portal like that because if you don't want to be here, why would I try to hold you here to prolong something that's going to eventually happen or to not allow you to be happy? You're a young man that's 17 to 23 years old and you're not happy. So that must mean something's going on up top, right? So why would I want you to stay and not be happy when you want to go on a portal and you want to do this? We need to figure it out, myself, your parents, and you. Let's all get together and let's see what's the best solution. And if staying here is the best solution, as long as we can make sure your mental is where it needs to be, then we'll do that. But if this isn't the best solution, no matter who you are, I think you need to go so that way you can have the right mental. Because if you don't have the right mental, you're not going to be good, period, for yourself or for anyone. So... I don't really worry about the portal. Like, no, it's not over. Somebody's gonna go on a portal again from every team. I mean, it's like it's just it's inevitable now. Like they're gonna go. Like somebody's gonna come and try to tell me that they need more money and you need to talk to the collective for me, Coach Fran. And I'm gonna say I can't. I don't like talking to them. I'm not doing that. So it's gonna be different things that happen, and guys don't want to go on the portal, and then it's gonna be other guys that wanna come. At the end of the day, we're gonna coach the guys that's here. And we're gonna coach them extremely hard and have fun doing it. And they're going to have fun and we're going to win. So if you want to win, come to Cubes. Thanks. Yep. Josh, if you could finish us up. Uh, first, Coach, I want to say uh, I'm going to speak for everybody saying thank you for being so transparent and amenable with your time. You know, I think we all really appreciate that. Um, having been through a coaching transition myself at a D1 level, how has it been for you implementing your culture, talking about the no hats, no do-rags in the building, in the football program, but also as you've been intentional about the community at large? I mean, it's been cool because Dart is our piece, right? So, you know, detail, accountable, relentless, and tough. You know, we're sticking with that. That's what it is. We won't bend. You know what I mean? We won't break on that at, at all. Um, so this, are you committed? Do you care? Can I trust you? I'm always asked those three things about everything. You know what I mean? Ask those three things. I mean, and so once I ask you that, and once I figure that out, and once we find that, is he committed? Does he care? Do we trust him? So then that helps. And the guys know that and they see that. But one thing, like, I've always lived my life of, you got to have a hat off when you go in the building. You can't have on a, a do-rag, a wave cap. You can't have that on when you go in the building. You know, there's certain things that you just don't do. So, like, some of those don't do's is like me. Like, with me, me and my wife and all of us sit down and eat. When I eat, I won't drink until after I'm done all my food. Because that's how I was when I was little. And I'm just programmed that way. So, like, I'll eat all of my food first and then I'm going to drink my juice or drink water. Because if I didn't eat all my food when I was younger, I wasn't getting no juice. So it's just kind of like what the rules were. And I'm just kind of following the rules. Like, hey, you can't be in a hat in the building because I want you to get a job. And I want you to know how to do certain things in the real world where it goes that way. And why am I so detailed about practice? Because Kirby Smart told me that winning is in the details. So I pay attention to all the little details because all the little details is what helped me get in the championship. And I got a national championship ring, which most people don't have. SEC championship, right? Which most people don't have and been able to do that. So the culture isn't hard to install. You just got to be consistent because all I know is my culture. I don't know what their culture was. I just know you're not following my culture. 
Yeah, I don't really care about what it was. Don't tell me anything bad about your coach because I think he was a great man and he brought you here. What I care about is you're not following Dart. And at this moment, I don't think you're committed. I don't think you care. And I can't trust you. So I won't change on that. But I'm going to be just as cool as they are. Like right now, I got this whole little Gucci belt on. I'm sitting here chilling. I'm going to wear the same things you wear. We're going to have the same mindset. But when you don't, when you disrespect Dart, you got a problem. Thank you, Coach. I think everybody's living the same life, about to, uh, eating all your food before you drink your juice. So I appreciate that. Hey, well, y'all be safe. Listen, man, I appreciate you guys coming on here, especially today and uh, having me be have the opportunity to come on here. I would hope that you guys, y'all need to talk to Coach Robinson, Coach Nick, you know, like Coach Ross. There's a bunch of guys on my staff that are really out there. And Nick, I think Nick's going to be probably the best recruiter in the country I've ever been around. Nobody that's just like, as much energy and enthusiasm as he had. So if y'all get an opportunity, guys, I'm letting y'all know now, I want more guys to communicate with other guys on my staff. You know, that's open to be able to do that as long as it goes through our guy here, Tyler. Everything go through Tyler. You guys are open to invite to be able to communicate with those guys because I want to get their name out there. I want to get their voice out there. It isn't just about the head football coach because they're trying to make me to a minimum. So make sure we do that. And you guys have a great holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, and y'all be safe, okay? Merry Christmas, man. Thank you, Coach. Same to you.